Clean Spark and Iron have reported their September production update. We're going to take a look at those as well as the charts for those two. We're going to look at Bitcoin. There's something interesting going on there as well as the money market funds. But before we get started, smash that like button, subscribe. If you've been with us a while and haven't done so yet, check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio let's get going all right so first of all economic calendar we got non-farm payroll today that came out with 250,000 added jobs compared to an expected 150,000 i wonder how many of those are really actually there and how much will get revised down i wonder how insane this data is going to get as we get into the election here also unemployment rate came in at 4.1 percent even though yesterday initial jobless claims came in higher than expected unemployment dropped so that's interesting uh u.s hourly wages supposedly increased by 0.4 percent in september uh that's interesting so there's wage inflation going on there wages year over year have gone up four percent compared to uh before last month's read which was 3.9 percent so up 0.1 percent there so there's a little bit of inflation there going on uh we had two feds speak today and that's about it the market was basically on fire today uh, money market funds so this is very interesting here uh yesterday this came out it came out reporting for october 2nd we have increased by nearly 40 billion dollars in uh in money market funds uh, and let's see the majority of that was coming from retail so retail is scared right now that's actually probably a, a good sign in terms of potentially being a time to buy uh, when retail gets scared and starts adding because you can see here they added significantly more than institutional institutional added about 14 billion dollars whereas um retail added the rest which would add it up to almost that 40 billion dollars so like I maybe mean, they added significantly more than institutional buyers did for their money market funds last month so that's interesting to see it shows that retail is scared of whatever's going on right now all right let's take a look at bitcoin all right bitcoin came into the 200 day moving average and it bounced off that sucker hard look at that it came in two dojis on it and now we are lifted off of it flying high we hit ran right into the 21 day moving average that's halted us for a moment but there are some things i like about this all we got to do is get above that 21 day moving average which technically we are above it ever so slightly right now if we can hold that for three more hours open up a candle above it and push higher that would be really fantastic for bitcoin we are moving up on low volume though so we don't have tons of volume volume has been dropping uh hopefully we get some volume to come through but I, what i do like and what is promising is on this uh this um, momentum oscillator that i've got here the orange one that's the slow one is pointing up the purple one which is the next slowest one is starting to curl back up and the two fastest ones the yellow and the blue are already in oversold territory and pointing up the last time we saw something like this occur when they started to curl over was back here right when flat it was still falling a bit because the, mo the the larger momentum one was starting to curl over but once they started all pointing back up again we had a significant run from the fast ones coming out of oversold territory and going to overbought territory uh we went from 52,000 to 60,000 eight and eight thousand dollar move last time we saw the fast uh, momentum uh oscillators move from oversold to overbought conditions which if we were to do that right now would take us right back to seventy thousand dollars so this this move here could easily take us right back to seventy thousand dollars and that's very exciting okay let's take a look at clean spark i actually have not read this ahead of time so let's see what's going on uh so clean spark their september update so they have over eight thousand bitcoin in their treasury that's very exciting they're coming after you hut and right for that second and third or third place for uh most Bitcoin held in the treasury of a Bitcoin miner. They're coming for you. Uh, they reached 27.6x a hash for their hash rate. That's actually pretty exciting. What were they at last time I checked? Like 26. That's pretty fantastic. We got another 1.6 out of them here in the last few days or weeks. Can't remember which. Um, let's see. Clean Spark is expecting to reach by the end of October 30x a hash. I know that's only what 2.3 x hash from where they currently are but that is a huge huge deal that they would be operating with 30 x hash by the end of this month if they can achieve that that's going to be a pretty amazing outcome i think for october they are let's see 
I mean, they're they're planning to get to fifty in twenty twenty five. But I mean, with the the way they've been they've been hitting their schedule lately, they they might get there sooner. So this is very exciting, actually. This is very very exciting. Clean Spark has been growing very very quickly. I remember not too long ago they were just you know hitting sixteen and celebrating that, and now we're we're hitting thirty and and celebrating that. So this is pretty exciting, actually, for Clean Spark to be. Uh, expanding their exahash so effectively, so quickly. Uh, this makes some of that dilution a little easier to, to swallow and deal with, but this is looking good. And I mean, as a result, we got a pretty sweet day out of it. They mined 493 Bitcoin in September. Uh, so for the year, they've mined 5,000 Bitcoin. Uh, let's see, total holdings, 8,049. Uh, they only sold 2.5 Bitcoin in September. That's pretty great to see. Uh, let's see. They've got a deployed fleet. The fleet efficiency is 21.9 joules to terahash. It's not bad. It's a little, I think it was a little worse than Bitfarms yesterday. Uh, month end was 27 exahash. Okay. They sold two. Uh, yeah, so they did have an impact from the hurricane, which caused them to, to have their uh, month of September have an average of 23.4 exahash, which had them mining less than 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 in the month before so that was a bit of an impact they are working they do have facilities in that area they are working to get them up up and running again in full capacity they have been acting charitably in terms of helping out in the in the uh, region where the impact of the hurricane is felt most uh, as well as in the surrounding areas and the community the communities that they are involved in so that's good to see that's good on them for that uh, they are expecting that this coming month they're going to get the uh, completion of the acquisition of Grid to complete by October. That's going to be a pretty exciting thing for October. Uh, let's see. And then they got the Mississippi uh, facility, which should increase their exahash by one exahash here that they're going to get in December. So that's another, about, you know, two months out before we'll see any results from that. So otherwise, is not, not too much going on here. Um, it's a pretty quiet update. So what's going on with Iron? So Iron, they mined 347 Bitcoin in September. Uh, let's see. It cost them about $23,600 in electricity cost to mine a Bitcoin. That does not include the operational costs in terms of like their whole operation, their administrative costs, their other costs that associated. That's purely purely the electrical cost. That's so it's a little bit misleading, but like it's good to see that they are reporting that is that is important to know. 21 exahash in, uh, installed 16 joules to, to terahash efficiency. So they're a lot more efficient than CleanSpark actually. That's pretty fan fantastic that keeps their cost per Bitcoin down, which is one of the reasons it's so profitable for them to sell their Bitcoin and not hold have a huddle. Uh, so they are planning in the next three months to go from 21 to 31 exahash. So they actually plan to exceed uh, Clean Spark here by year. And I mean, Clean Spark's not going to stop at 30 here in October. They're planning to get to 30 in October. They might be at 40 by December. Who knows? Uh, but they are planning to be at 31 by the end of the quarter. So that's pretty exciting. And then they also plan to be at 50 by the end of 2025. So there's going to be a lot of companies with that 50 plus exahash here next year. There's going to be a lot of competition in this space. There's going to, it's going to be very, very grueling, I would say for those involved. Uh, so their operating hash rate for September was 16.5 compared to 10.9 in August. That is a pretty significant bump. A little, uh, There's over a 50% bump in exahash there. So that's that's exciting. And they mined, as a result, they mined significantly more Bitcoin, over 100 more Bitcoin compared to the month before. So they mined 347 Bitcoin in September compared to 245 in August. That is amazing. That's a that's a wonderful uh, improvement there. They they were able to uh, mine, get mining revenue of $21.4 million, uh, you know, 6.4 million more than they did the month before. That's also pretty exciting. Uh, and they only increased their electric cost by less than 1 million, 900,000 uh, dollars increase in their electricity costs. So they, they, they only increased their costs by 900,000, but they increased their revenue by, um, by, 6.4 million dollars so that's pretty exciting that's that, that's a pretty significant uh, increase there i like that i like that a lot 
Uh, hardware profit margins at 62%. I like seeing that. That's pretty good. I wish CleanSpark had a little more data like this on theirs as well. That, that, that'd be pretty great. Revenue per Bitcoin, $61.6,000 of revenue per Bitcoin. So basically that's what they sold it for on average. And their average electric cost is 23000 Now that does, of course, doesn't show you the whole picture. That's just the pure electric cost. It's definitely costing them more than $23,000 to mine a Bitcoin. But it should be costing them less than $61,000 uh, to mine a Bitcoin. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be selling it. They'd probably be holding them for better days, especially as Bitcoin is driving up higher. Uh, the AI Cloud Services. So they actually now have uh, uh, 1,896 NVIDIA H100s and H200 GPUs. And let's see, they are estimated to contribute about 10% to run rate earnings per year. And so we'll see what the, the, when they are actually reporting on that. Uh, their AI Services... Revenue, oh, significantly lower than in August, about half what they had in August. So that's a bit of a bummer. Electric costs, eh, not too much. It's actually pretty low. Hardware profit margin, 98%. Look at that profit margin compared to Bitcoin mining, 98% profit margin compared to a 62% profit margin. That's pretty significant, actually. I wouldn't be surprised to see Iron actually uh, in, uh, contribute more of their megawatts toward AI compared to Bitcoin, considering that uh, that that profit margin that they're getting off of AI. That's very exciting. Uh, let's see here. They got their 20x hash ahead of schedule. We know that they're on track for 31. We know that uh, they increased their revenue by 42% and reduced their electric costs by 21%. That's exciting. Like just getting more efficient is, is great. Um, so, okay. So they're expecting to get about 32 million in annualized income from their AI side of the business. That's lower than bit digital, but bit digital also isn't, uh, you know, mining with 20 X hash Bitcoin. So that's why they're a much smaller company, but well, that's pretty exciting. So let's take a look at the charts here. So clean spark, clean spark is getting a little bit interesting here. So we can see here, clean sparks trying to break out of this. Now they're trying, they're above the 200 day, uh, sorry, the 21 day moving average. That is excellent. That's good to see the, the, Momentum oscillators are finally starting to point up. They need to get this orange one out of oversold territory to really get this thing moving in off the ground here. So we could, I'm not, I'm not too excited yet. I'm not getting excited yet, but I am seeing the precursors to potentially seeing this thing finally break out of this aggressive downtrend that it's been in for, uh, honestly, for over a month now. Uh, like we are going to see this thing come out of it. And when it does come out of it, I think it's going to be explosive. I think we're going to be seeing this thing up at 18, 19, $20 faster than we realize. And so I am excited to see days like this, but I'm not getting overly excited about it. All right. It's, it's starting to look a little bit better than it was before. Uh, we're above the 21 day moving average. We need to hold that for two or three days before I actually care about this move. So that's all for clean spark. Let's take a look at iron. Iron's actually in a significantly better position than clean spark right now. I dropped way less in terms of the last month or so. It's been going sideways. It's been consolidating honestly since August 5th. And I think we're consolidating waiting for that October moment where we can see ourselves revisiting this 15, $16. Maybe, maybe this time we'll peak out to 18, possibly even $20 on, um, on iron if they hit all their their targets with uh you know with ease and accuracy and if they they stay on 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 their schedule with everything uh i do see that their momentum oscillator on the orange one is coming out of oversold conditions right now that is fantastic the other three are now oh well, the two fast ones are pointing up the the the, the mid-level slower one <laughs> the the purple one there is going flat which soon will curl up. That's all very exciting. We see those things. We've seen this before when they go from the bottom to the top, uh, which I mean, eh, when we take the orange from the bottom of the top, let's, let's, let's look at that. The last time the orange one came from the bottom of, to the top of the oscillator, which would have been started here on May 16th, it went from $5 all the way up to 15 almost before we saw a pullback. So we saw a 200% run when we saw the orange uh, oscillator move from the bottom to the top before we saw the first real sell-off of that uh, move. So if we were to do that again, we would be looking at uh, $24 before uh, the uh, price of this thing really started to cool off again. Uh, so that would actually be pretty exciting. Now, I don't, I'm not calling $24. Uh, I'm thinking probably closer to 18. We might see 100% move, maybe 150% move this time. That would be pretty fantastic, especially when we're coming off of, you know, an eight. Well, if we're coming from the bottom, if we're coming from the bottom, it's about the same. So it'd be about, you know, 
16 to 18 dollars that we'd see from a two 300 percent move on this thing if we're counting it from the the, the day we we went out of oversold conditions we're looking at you know we're looking at about 771 or so but let's call it 750 ish uh so 15 would be a double um 2250 would be a triple so maybe maybe low 20 maybe very low 20s or very high teens for this run here going into uh, september going into uh q4 in the holiday season uh so i do like where this is i like that iron is making a head and shoulders down here an inverted head and shoulders i like that we're right on the neckline for the inverted head and shoulders we're getting right up on it we're, we're almost there all we got to really do is get another not even a dollar we got to get up to 937 938 to say that we're above the neckline on the inverted head and shoulders and once we do that we are flying high up to 11 1126 we conquer 11 1126 we're going right back up into the teens right up into like 13 14 dollars where we may struggle a bit up to you know 15 16 bucks and then we might do a little bit of price discovery for the not price discovery because we've been higher than that before but we might be looking to discover a new cycle high here in December uh, for iron, especially if Bitcoin gets the move that we're looking for up to that 70,000 and above uh, for the Christmas season on Bitcoin. But anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Check out the Trade Cave store. Link in the description as well as the channel bio. Stop by tomorrow for the weekly and monthly closes on our favorite Bitcoin miners and have a profitable day.